So to illustrate gradient descent, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph. Um, we're going to draw a graph of x versus y, where we've got some values between 0 and 1 for x. So I'm going to calculate um, y based on uh, equals x times 0 0.3 plus 0.3. So I'll just pick 0.3 as a as an example. So effectively that's the um, gradient of the graph and that's the intercept of the y-axis. Um, so I'm just going to copy that down which will give us the value there. I'm then going to approximate the values of those two things. So here we've got the gradient is the 0.3 here and the intercept is the 0.3 there. So I'm going to estimate some values of those for n and c. And then I'm going to calculate what nx plus c is by taking m times x plus c. Copy those down. So now I'm simply going to plot those on a graph. Simple line chart. Sorry, simple line chart. And I just need to set my x axis to be x. And that is my. So the blue line is the, the line for y, which is this column here, and then my estimation, which is some way off at the moment, mx plus c, is the, is the pink line. Okay, so there's, there's my chart. So what I want to do, though, is to work out a way to gradually change these values of m and c to better match this line. So clearly the gradient needs to become down less negative and the intercept point needs to come down somewhat as well. We know actually the answer is 0.3 and 0.3 um, because that's what we put in here. But we're going to see if we can get the computer to get Excel to calculate that for us. So first of all, what I'm going to do is calculate the difference. So we're going to take um, mx plus c minus y. So that's equal to that minus that. So that's the difference between what we've guessed and what the actual value is. So it's that distance there, that distance there, that distance there, that distance there. So that's the difference. And then I'm going to calculate my error. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equals 0 0.5 times the difference equals 0 0.5 times the difference squared. So that's going to give me um, an error. And basically what I can do now is I can work out if I change these values of he here, what impact that will have on the error there. So I need to know whether I need to make that value slightly smaller or slightly larger or slightly more, more negative or slightly less negative, or this one slightly, slightly more positive or slightly less positive in order to increase the accuracy of this line to reduce the error. So what I did previously was I fed a number of values through this um, spreadsheet and I varied the value of m from minus 2 to, to plus 3 and I calculated what the error was for a fixed value of c and I plotted it on a graph. So you can see that's the graph that we have that represents um, represents the values for m. And I did the same for c, and you get a similar but slightly different shaped graph. Now I didn't set m or c um, to 0 0.3, so the actual it doesn't actually hit the hit the zero. It doesn't actually get down to zero. Um, but that doesn't matter. Then what I did was I then went in and I created um, let me just zoom in a bit. Created a spreadsheet with 
values across the top here from minus 2 to plus 3 and the same down here for minus 2 to plus 3 and I fed each of those pairs of combinations into here to work out what the resulting error was. So here you can see, if we zoom out again to 25%, this is just basically graphing the, um, just looking at using the numbers to represent the, um, the contours. So you can see that it shows the contours that, uh, of this, of this three-dimensional space now, where, whereby the height of the land is the amount of error. And I've put the yellow lines as 0.3 and 0.3, so that should be our max, our minimum, which it is. It's, if we set it to there, then we know that the error is zero. Whereas if we've got a value over here, the error is seven. The error over here is six, and these values over here are all low. But, and effectively, what we want to do is, given a random starting point, we want to make our way down this hill as efficiently as possible to try and get from our starting point down to the minimum down here. So it depends where we start and actually what you might find is that in order to come straight down this hill here you actually come down like this, you come straight down like that and then you turn a corner and you start coming back towards the minimum there. Because if you imagine that you're standing on the hill on a hillside in the fog and you can't see where the village is in the bottom of the valley you just need to walk straight down the hill which might be down this way and then once you get into the valley you follow the valley down towards the, the village down in the bottom of the valley well it's more of a crater than a valley but you, hopefully you know what I mean so there you can see those are the those are the graphs and effectively um, what we're looking at on the other graph is a slice across this three-dimensional space to get a two-dimensional value for C and a two-dimensional value for a graph for M. So one across there, one across there. So what we want to do next is then work out where we are on this graph. So we need to work out if we're over this side where the gradient is positive, we know that we need to make the value smaller or move this way move towards the more negative and if at this side where the gradient is negative we know that we need to move make the value more positive to head towards this minimum on this um, for m and the same for c so fortunately we've got a way of working out what that gradient is and we can do that using calculus using differentiation because we know what the equation for this um, for this 3D space is because we've worked it out in here. Basically, it's this equation here, which is 0.5 d2 squared. Now, d2 in turn is mx plus c minus y. So, what we need to do is to differentiate this firstly with respect to m and then with respect to c to work out what the relative values are. So, let's work out the gradient with respect to uh, m first. So if we differentiate this, now m is part of d2, so we can use what's called the chain rule and we can differentiate first of all this piece of the function which is 0.5 times d2 to the power of 2 and the power rule says that if you've got x to the power of n, if you differentiate that, that becomes n x to the power of n minus 1. So quite simply this, 0.5 d2 squared, the 2 drops down to wipe out the 0.5 and you end up with just d2. So we can start off with equals d2. The, the point to remember though is that d2 itself has mx plus c minus y in it. So we now need to differentiate this and multiply it by what we've just done here. So we've differ partially differentiate this with, with respect to uh, m, then c and y are both constants. Um, m times x differentiated with respect to uh, m just gives us x. So the gradient for that 
is d2 times x. Similarly, for the gradient with respect to c, firstly we differentiate this, and of course we get d2 again. Then we differentiate this with respect to c, so mx and y are both constants, so we differentiate just c with respect to c, which gives us 1. So we just need d2 times 1, which is just d2. So that gives us the gradients across there. So knowing what the gradient is, we can then take these values here, and we can sum them up over here. equals sum the error divided by the number of values that I've got, which is 11. And I can copy that over there, and that will give me the average gradient with respect to C and M. So we've worked out then whether we're this side of the minimum or that side of the minimum. And basically, if the, if the if the gradient is negative, we want to make the value more positive. If the, if the value is positive, we want to make um, m more negative. So if we subtract the gradient, we will move in the right direction. And not only that, if you subtract the gradient, then we will move faster downhill where it's steeper and slower downhill where it's less steep. So we're going to use the value of the gradient as a guide as how big a step to take. So that when we get down here, we're going to get, take smaller steps so that we can, so we don't overstep the minimum and end up wobbling around. So what we're going to do is we're going to set something called a learning rate. And we're going to say that our new value of m equals m minus the gradient times that learning rate. And the value of c equals the the new value of c equals c minus the gradient, sorry, let's just say that, equals m minus the gradient with respect to m times the learning rate. And this one equals c minus the gradient with respect to C times the learning rate. So basically you can see that we're going to make this one slightly less negative and this one slightly less positive. So they're both heading towards the, the zeros. So what I can do then is I can take those values and I can paste them on top of there. Um, but I need to just paste the values, otherwise I'm going to get a circular function. So I'm going to do a copy and then see this line here and the error is 0.8575. So you can see that my error has gone down. So every time I do that, it's going down. Now what I can do is I can say equals that. Excel's going to throw a bit of a wobbly and say I've got a circular reference now and it doesn't like circular references so it's going to give me some instructions but I can get around that by going into options calculation set my calculation to manual and say I want to iterate one step at a time so basically I'm saying allow this circular reference but every time I hit calculate iterate once around the uh, circular reference. So I can do that equals that, and I can do that equals that. So now if I press F9, every time I press F9, it's going to copy those values over. Let's just fix the value of So I'm doing F9, and it's going to step closer and closer and closer. 
error values coming down, the gradient's getting smaller and smaller. The line's getting closer and closer. Until eventually my error gets down to close to zero. And as you can see, these values are tending towards 0 0.3, so C wins the race and gets there slightly ahead of M. So there we go, we've descended from where we started from, which was, I think, somewhere over here. One, minus one, somewhere, somewhere here, I guess. And we've descended down this hill by taking the, the gradient, and we've ended up at the absolute minima, which is here. Now, I've done this again here with a different example, whereby rather than having a straight line, I've kind of generated some some values for y, which are kind of more scattered around. So now we're never going to find a line that kind of sets an error of zero, but we can still minimize that line. So if I just do the same thing on here, It's going to eventually line up as best it can to minimize minimize the error. Now this time the error has not gone down to zero. It's um, settled on that value there. So there we go. That's gradient descent. So we've marched down the hill to the bottom.